In just a moment, we're going to have Brother Ron McMillan come and play for us. We're doing something a little bit different. He is a saxophonist, and if you remember in the Bible, it talks about praising through song and music and instruments. And so Brother Ron McMillan of Colorado Christian Fellowship is going to bless us. Brother Ron, why don't you come over or say a few words before you begin. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Can I get a praise the Lord? Amen. Amen. Father, we come before you today, Lord God. We thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for us, Lord God. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. There's a song that says, how great thou art. Praise the Lord. There's a song that expresses Jesus' love for us. And it says that he will leave the 99 to come get us. Amen. And it describes it, this song describes it as reckless love. 
But God has a reckless love for us. Amen. Reckless love.
Praise the Lord. Now we talked about the Lord's love for us. Um, there's a song that expresses our love for him. And some of you may not know this song, but it's called More Than Anything. And the lyrics say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Lord, I love you more than anything. Jesus, thank you for what you've done, what you've done for us on the cross. Amen. Amen. For the last selection, um, I want to give just a short little story and testimony before I play it. Um, in December of this past year, I lost my youngest son to, uh, he was a victim of some violence and, and, you know, I'm a minister of the word and, and I've prayed over my children and for God's protection and everything. And as I was processing what had just happened in the wee hours of the morning, God just came and comforted me and and he embraced me and and I I just thank him for that and I just give God total praise for everything that he's done in my life and even in that you know God received the glory and he's still receiving the glory but the most unimaginable unimaginable thing that a parent could experience happened to me and I thought it would never be me but this song is called Total Praise, and the lyrics say, your peace you give me in time of the storm. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life, and I lift my hands in total praise to you. And the scripture that the Lord gave me in that night was, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. And that's what I am still doing. I am blessing the Lord at all times, no matter what's going on, and his praise shall always continually be in my mouth. So if you worship him with me in total praise right now, amen. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Man, thank you for blessing us, Brother Ron. Thank you, Ron McMillan. All right, we're going to pause just a moment for a little instrument tuning, and then we'll get on with the worship service. What's, What's up, up, Red Rocks? Red Rocks? Hey, Abel. Happy birthday, Steve. It's cold up here, so the guys are going to tune up again. Just a second. Thank you. And now we invite Father Michael Nicosia of the Ecumenical Catholic Communion to play the flute and get us prepared for worship. Father Nicosia. Thank you. 
I think you can understand why Father Michael Nicosia is not only the Colorado Council of Churches board chair, but our house musician. <laughs> Let's stand and prepare ourselves for Easter. Christ is risen. We will now do the call to worship, just in case you, I don't want you to get it twisted. I'm the leader, you're the people, all right? We're gonna go responsibly. Easter takes us by surprise. Early in the morning, the obstacles we expect to face have been rolled away. Where once you...
and all who encounter the risen one will join the resurrection procession. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Now, Blood Brothers will lead us in our congregational hymn. Good morning, Red Rocks. Let's all sing together, Christ the Lord is risen today because he is risen.
be seated. You may be seated. Good morning once again. I am Adrian Miller, the Executive Director for the Colorado Council of Churches. Welcome. I can tell that y'all really love the Lord because it is cold and early and you're here. Blessings, blessings. All right, we got to do a quick roll call. Who is here at this Easter sunrise service for the very first time? Nice, impressive. All right, who is here from Colorado? Who is here from outside Colorado? All right, who's here from outside the country? All right, nice. Who considers them from another planet? Nope. All right, you're all welcome here at this Easter sunrise service. So, uh, we have been doing this now. This is our 77th year of hosting this event. The Colorado Council of Churches is a coming together of 13 Christian denominations representing over 800 churches around Colorado. And our motto is this, walking together in faith, working together for justice. Jesus Christ called us to be one, and the Colorado Council of Churches is an example of that becoming a reality. Let me first thank the worship participants. So uh, I, we also, um, I'm presiding. Uh, and then also we have the morning prayer by Reverend Gretchen Salsville, of the stated clerk of the Presbytery of Denver. I want to assure you, oh, well, Presbyterians represent, yes, all right. I want to assure you that we at the Colorado Council of Churches do follow rules of grammar. The G in Gretchen's name is small, and that's intentional, all right? Just want you to know that. Um, the prayer of illumination, the reading of the gospel, and the benediction will be by Reverend Dr. D. Cooper, lead presbyter for the Presbytery of Denver. And our preacher for the morning is Reverend Aaron Gilmore, acting conference minister for the Rocky Mountain Conference of the United Church of Christ. I want to thank all of the volunteers who have helped make this service possible, especially Troop 130 of the Scouts. You've done so much for us, for a thank you. You've been very faithful to us over the years. Now, I was actually thinking I might have to give you some good, bad news this morning, but I actually have good news. During the week, it was touch and go as to whether we would have the doves released this morning because uh, it's been a tradition for years with the Council of Churches when we sing Amazing Grace at the end of the service we release the doves but the doves need to have it be a certain temperature in order to um, do their thing now it is warm enough for them to be here so I reports that the doves are in the building I was really sweating that y'all I thought I was gonna have to announce a clothing drive for the doves and ask you to save extra small clothing just so this wouldn't happen, but they're here. We encourage you to share this experience on social media. Our hashtag is Red Rocks Easter. Uh, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, so please uh, share this experience and let other people know that you are here. And with that, I will invite Reverend Gretchen Sauceville to lead us in prayer. Good morning. Friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Friends, I invite you to find a posture of prayer this morning. Let us pray. Holy One, Creator of the sun and the moon and the stars, somewhere between the darkness and the dawn they came. On the first day of the week while it was still dark and the uncertainty of life hung in the balance, as grief choked the soul and the finality of death hung in the air, they came for the assurance of what was, and the hope of what could be. We have come as they came, 
As people of the space between the light and the darkness, where fear and uncertainty dance with hope and peace, where joy and skepticism keep company, waiting for what the light reveals. We come as people united in a name, Jesus, the Christ, crucified and risen, around a symbol of death and destruction and resurrection. We come drawn together by a common longing to see that he is not here, to hear he is risen, to sing Alleluia, to stand in solidarity, to hold in love, to live without fear, to proclaim our God reigns. We come to see and to be seen in the risen one. We come in the space between, where the light reflects the world as it is, not as you, O oh God, would have it be that even in between the darkness of night and the brightest day and the promise of new life, we see the marks of pain and the face of fear. As we wander in the darkness, you light our ways. As we seek the answers, you stand in the waiting. We know that resurrection is not return. And we come today not to be returned, but to turn toward the resurrection, realizing that the sun that rises upon us all rises upon all people. And the light that we are called to carry is for all people. And we look to you to lead us. You are the God of movement and measure, and we are called to be your hands and your feet in the world, even when our minds are heavy and our hearts are confused and our conscience questions. Keep us from running in fear and keep us to stay in faith. We have come to stand between the darkness and the dawn of new days in neighborhoods and on playgrounds street corners and corner shops, in stadium seating and school board meetings, on borders and in the margins, in the lands called holy, in cities called Moscow, Maripool, and even Morrison, Colorado. Holding, always holding, the forgotten, the frightened, the friends, the hostages, the hungry, the heartbroken, the hated, the social workers, the soldiers, the strangers, the orphaned, the oppressed, the othered, the opinionated, the seekers, the Marys, the Peters, the Jesus, and the Judas. Creator of eras and opportunities, they came when it was still dark. And we continue to come year after year, sitting in the space between the almost and the not yet, until some day arrives, when the pain of the kingdom is past and every tear is wiped away, and we no longer fear the dark or grow faint in the light, but we go forth as people of the resurrection, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, I invite you to rise this day as you are able and to join me in the prayer and the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, praying together. Our Father, Mother God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let the people of God say, Alleluia. Amen. You may be seated. All right, one great way to stay warm is to dance. And uh, you guys can stand with us. We are uh, going to lead you in a couple of songs here. And I uh, wanted to introduce everybody. Jay over here on the fiddle. Troy on the keys. Taylor right behind me on the drums. Bob on bass. Josh on guitar. My name is Lance. I'm the pastor at Conifer Community Church, just right up 285. And uh, it is a blessing for us to be here together and to be able to worship. We're going to lead you in a song called House of the Lord. And uh, what a blessing to have the house of the Lord with a sunroof today. Amen? As we go through this song, in the chorus, there is a line that says, shout out your praise. It's going to come up twice. So the first time we sing it, you're going to know to get ready. Because the second time it comes around, and I'm going to give you the cue, I want you to shout at the top of your lungs. We shout out your praise. All right, can we do that? All right, let's try it, all right? I'm going to give you a count of three, and then we say, we shout out your praise. One, two, three. Oh, that is beautiful. And you know what? I want you to dig a little bit deeper. Let's do it one more time. Shout out your praise. One, two, three. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We 
shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. I've got a show in Shout out your praise. And I said, I said, what do you think we should do this year? What, uh, what needs to happen for us to feel like this is the time to celebrate the resurrection of Christ? And he said, let's go back. Let's go back centuries and let's look at how the church has sung together God's praise and, and sung about the resurrection. And so went back and, and I found a couple of hymns that uh, we could put together this morning. And I wanted us to sing together and, and join with the saints of old that we would sing all hail the power of Jesus' name and crown him with many crowns. And so if you would, join with me and join with the saints as we proclaim the resurrection. Really? 
brothers for blessing us. I forgot to mention Barbara Arduin, who is providing our American uh, Sign Language interpretation. She drove a midnight car from Kansas just to be with us today. Well, it's giving time, the offering, also known as the Sermon on the Amount. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, can we just go to Easter and have church without some preacher asking us for money? First of all, I'm not a preacher. I'm a layperson. Secondly, there is a reality check that we have to give you. We don't get this venue for free. There are costs associated with it. Just like people who do concerts and other things, we have to pay for those expenses, and we rely on your generosity to do so. So things like putting these crosses up, renting this venue, the law enforcement that keeps us safe, the people doing parking control, um, all kinds of things are necessary to support this service. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is we have enough resources in this venue right now to support this service. The bad news is it's still in your pockets. But this year, we're doing something a little bit different. A lot of you are new, but for those of you who have been here several times, you may remember this. We used to pass milk cartons down the rows in order for you to give your donations. This year, we're moving to a predominantly online method. So if you have a bulletin, you will notice that in the right-hand corner of your bulletin, there's a list of various ways to give and a QR code. We will also be flashing that on the screen. We need to raise $35,000 in order to cover our costs. I know that we can do it. We're asking for a minimum contribution of $10. So if you could help us out with that, we can not only pay for this service, but also be in good shape for next year, because we're provided for providing this, we're pro committed to providing this service for free for years to come. And is there a more beautiful place to worship and celebrate Easter than Red Rocks? I mean, really, come on, right? All right. So Blood Brothers will lead, the, lead us um, during the offering, but please, we rely on your generosity in order to support this service. So you can give through Cash App, Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal. You can text Red Rocks Easter to 844-844-6844 and donate that way. And if you're not feeling any of this digital stuff and online giving, you can certainly give cash. We have volunteers stationed at different places, mainly the Scouts, with a CCC donations bucket. They're clearly identifiable, so you can give them your cash or your checks. And then also, you can also mail a check to the Council of Churches after the service. And we give information on how to do that. Uh, in the bulletin and also on our website. So thank you for blessing us, and I'll turn it over to Blood Brothers. Thank you. May the generosity of Christ be reflected in God's people today. As I celebrate year after year the resurrection of Christ, it, it creates inside of me, you know, the, the warmth and the excitement of the victory that Christ has won. But it also creates inside of me a longing. A longing for what will be when there will be the restoration of all things. When we gather together with those saints of old, where we'll be able to see and sit face to face with our Savior and to celebrate Him and worship Him in all of His majesty. But until that time, So I invite you to imagine with me today.
Thank you so much to all those who have given. We appreciate your generosity. And again, we need to raise $35,000, so spread the word. And thank you for supporting this service. Let me bless this offering. Gracious God, we just thank you for Jesus Christ who died for our sins so that we may be redeemed and have eternal life. We give these gifts with a giving heart. We thank you for this opportunity to spread the gospel, not only here at Red Rocks, but throughout Colorado, our country, and around the world. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Amen. Now we will have our doxology. Let's sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
now we invite Reverend Dr. D. Cooper to bring the prayer of illumination. Siblings in Christ, let us join our voices in prayer. O oh, great mystery in whose depths we find healing and ourselves, we ask that you enfold us now in your presence. Restore us to your peace. Renew us through your power and ground us in your grace. Speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Siblings in Christ, I invite you to stand as you are able in body and or spirit as we hear the gospel proclaimed. I'm reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance of the tomb. And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Friends, these are ancient words. These words are true. May God add a special blessing and sprinkling of understanding on us as we read God's word. Please be seated. Well, I've heard it said that one of the top things to do if you live in Colorado is to attend the Colorado Council of Churches Easter Sunrise Service. And standing here looking out at all of you, I have to say I have heard it right. This is one of the most beautiful and most glorious mornings I have been a part of. Beautiful and beloved, it is Easter morning. And today we gather to proclaim that Jesus, the Lord of love, the Prince of Peace, the one who was crucified, died, and was buried, is risen. And given that we are here to celebrate the most joyous day in the Christian year, I suppose one might find it odd that I chose to read the resurrection story from the Gospel of Mark. There are, after all, no resurrection appearances. There are no words of comfort from Jesus. There are no alleluias and amens. It ends simply with, and they went and told no one, for they were afraid. It is, in fact, such an odd ending, an unexpected ending, that when you turn to the end of the Gospel of Mark, you will find alternative endings there, ones that align more closely with the other Gospels. Surely Mark couldn't have meant to end his gospel this way, with the women walking away in silence and telling no one. A more literal translation would read, to no one anything they said, afraid they were for. It reads as though the author was suddenly pulled away mid-sentence, almost as if there is a comma and the rest of the sentence isn't there. It is a strange enough ending that some believe the other half of this sentence is missing, mutilated, or accidentally lost. 
Yet despite this strange ending, the New Testament scholars believe that this is likely the ending that Mark intended. All the alternatives would suggest that we don't do well with inconclusive endings. And there is a temptation, especially on Easter morning, to add these additional verses as they lend themselves to more grand alleluias. But what if we were to stick with the possibility that Mark meant to end it this way? What if an unfinished silence was the point? If we think for a minute about who the original hearers of Mark's gospel were, these were people who had not been eyewitnesses of Jesus. They had never seen him. They had never sat with him at the table or gathered with him in that upper room. They were living in a generation or two after Jesus, and it was not a happy scene. The same empire that crucified Jesus had destroyed the Jewish temple and most of Jerusalem. Hundreds, hundreds were killed, and they were still being persecuted. Those folks would have heard the stories of the resurrection, and they would know the story of the empty tomb, but they would also know that this miraculous event did not suddenly make everything okay. Jesus rising didn't end the violence and terror of the empire. It didn't immediately bring peace on earth. This was a people who were still living in terror and fear of the Roman Empire. And so what if Mark tells this story of three women who come to the tomb anxious and who flee from the tomb in terror and amazement because the people he is writing to are themselves seized by terror and amazement? I can imagine terror that, that they were feeling living in this world still dominated by the Roman Emperor, and I can imagine the amazement that they felt and the possibility that the love that they had known in Jesus was in fact a love more powerful and more victorious and more enduring than all the empires of the world. And who knows if the author of the Gospel of Mark could imagine people would be gathered almost 2,000 years later in places like this, still telling his story. But it feels like Mark could have written this Gospel for us. We too didn't see Jesus. We didn't walk with him to Jerusalem or sit with him in the upper room. And while the 21st century is a long way from the Roman Empire, I don't know a day that I don't wake up in terror and amazement. Terror for the division and separation and destruction and violence that continues to be true in our world, and yet amazement every day when I look by the incredible acts of compassion and justice and creativity and resilience and love that I see people showing one another every day to strangers and even to enemies. Whether he intended it or not, it feels like Mark was writing this gospel for us. Which is why I actually love this ending. Because rather than sugarcoating reality or giving us a Hollywood ending, Mark's end, Mark ends with this very real human experience of confusion and fear and hope and awe all wrapped up together. And then leaves the rest of the story on the other side of that comma. Mark opens his gospel saying, this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Right from the start, he tells us he's not going to finish the whole story. This is the beginning. This is the prologue. And Mark, of course, knows that the story of Jesus' resurrection didn't end in fear. He knows that at some point following that first Easter morning, the fear and terror that had seized those women was replaced by an encounter of the risen Christ, and they went and shared their story, or we would not be here today. But unlike Luke and Matthew, Mark puts the encounters with the risen Christ on the other side of the comma. And this inconclusive ending declares that the risen Christ is not bound by time or place or person or by one single testimony. It just says, guess what? Jesus is on the loose. Love is on the loose. And the rest of the story is being told by the followers of Jesus in every time and in every generation, in their own tongue and in their own way, with their own story of what it meant to them when the risen Christ met them and love found their way, their, its way inside them. The rest of the story continues to be told by every heart of hate that is melted, by every life that is met with grace, by every sorrow that is turned to joy, by every grief that is held in community, 
by every chain that is broken, by every prisoner that is freed, by every table that is, welcomes the stranger, by every community that loves in public, and by every act that upholds the dignity and worth of every single one of God's beloved creations. Friends, Mark's non-ending opens up endless possibilities of how and when and where the risen Christ will appear. And what is possible when the love of God is at loose in the world and in our hearts. In my denomination, the United Church of Christ, the comma has found its way into our imagination, and we often refer to a quote by Gracie Allen that says, never place a period where God has placed a comma. I don't know how you arrived here this morning. I don't know what you woke to as the alarm woke you up at a very early time in the morning, and I don't know what you are facing when you head back home. I don't know if you came here with a heavy heart or an anxious spirit. I don't know if you are in between jobs or relationships. I don't know if you are struggling to make ends meet or if you have more money than you know what to do with. I don't know if you are a skeptic, a believer, or somewhere in between. I do know that many of us are exhausted. I know that many of us fear for the future and the future of our children. I know that many of us also are grateful for the another day of life and for the loved ones who stand beside us. What I hope you take with you this morning is this. Easter is not a moment in history. Easter, my friends, is right now. Easter is what happens on the other side of the comma. Easter is what happens when this profound mystery of the infinite, unconditional, unpredictable love of God finds its way through us in all that we carry. And we join in this most extraordinary work of loving one another as God first loved us. In the midst of all that you may be experiencing and all that you carry, and however, however broken and impossible our current state may seem, there is an invitation coming to us this morning from the Gospel of Mark to trust that there is courage and grace and life and possibility and freedom on the other side of the comma. Love finds its way through fear. Love finds its way through grief. Love finds its way through shame and guilt and doubt and anger, and love finds its way even through death. So that what has been true from that very first Easter morning unto today is that when we seemingly find ourselves in an empty to, in, a, in a tomb, when we find ourselves in a place where we can't imagine a future, when theme, things seem like they are at their worst and we want, a run, and we want to run, run away afraid, love finds us on the other side of the comma. And we, our stories, become part of the miracle. We become part of the miracle and the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ when we turn to our neighbors on the left and on the right on our right and we begin to love one another and so may the lord of love and the prince of peace the one who was died who was buried who was crucified and who has risen may this one go with you into the dawning of this new day. Friends, God meets us on the other side of the comma. Amen. And now another wonderful tradition with this service is we're going to sing Amazing Grace and the last uh, Versus the last stanza, we're going to do a cappella without any music. So for those of you that are into the doves, that's when they get released. So get ready, get your cameras ready for that. All right. Well, it's wonderful to be here with you today. And uh, we've been doing this for three years and uh, appreciate every moment of it. But you know what? I haven't seen a sunrise yet. Until today, I kind of snuck out and, and went up and saw 
Scramble Campbell up there painting the sunrise and, and uh, got a glimpse of what you guys are seeing. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure who has the better view, whether I have the better view or you do, uh, but glorious time for us to celebrate the resurrection together. Amen? grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first Shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. Beloved explorers, as you leave this place of beauty, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face, and may you have the courage to run from the tomb, to live your life, to speak and share your story, and to express your love. May you not limit Easter to the pages of history, but experience it as an ongoing reality, unfolding in the spaces between fear and hope, doubt and faith. And if and when the world falls apart in your life, may you hear God's voice deep, deep within, saying, I am here with you. You are called, you are blessed, you are loved. In all times and all spaces, we belong to God. And so now go surrounded by the love of God, empowered by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and energized by the synchronicity of the Spirit, now and forever. Friends, join me. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next year.
sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder.
you just one heart, a single candle in the dark. And there are shadows here, feeding on your fears. That you don't have what it takes. Who are you to make a change? But oh, oh, don't underestimate the God you follow. Whatever you do, just don't look. Just move past how I feel. 